Hey everyone, I'm Erin and this is the Cardboard Republic. We are here with October's To Be Played list. So first, let's go over um, how September's To Be Played list went. <laughs> well. So first up, we were supposed to play Steampunk Rally and we did. We totally did. It came in a little late, so we're still working on the review. It was our September game of the month and we were able to squeeze in a couple playthroughs just under the wire. Still counts though. Totally still counting that one. And then Seven Sevens. This is the game about sort of collecting sets of seven, but not really collecting, kind of putting them down. And anyway, sets of seven. That's all you really need to know, need to know about Seven Sevens. We did totally play this probably like seven times. Pawns. Because it was fun and it was also pretty quick and pretty simple and very easy to get to the table. Nevermore, that was our next one, and we also played this. We're totally on a roll. Nailed it. Nevermore is a poker variant style game. So you play with cards and you're trying to score points, but you also have health. And as your health diminishes, you turn into a raven, and then it's your job to peck people to death. So anyway, we played this one a few times because it was actually pretty fun too, and we will need a few more playthroughs before we can put out a review on this one, but you should see that from us soon. And then there was Trombon. We played that too. It's a two-player trolley building game, and obviously it works really well for two players, though there was some, like, a lot of math. There was a lot of math in that one, so buyer beware. And now for our failures. Firefly. We weren't able to get this one to the table as much as I really wanted to, it's just kind of a long game, and we found that we didn't have too many nights where people were really feeling like, let's play a long game. Hopefully as the weather cools off around here in New England, though, those types of games seem to see more play when you have those, like, long, dreary, cold winter nights. The same kind of goes for Nature of the Beast. We This is our card draw game from last month, and it's still our plan to play it soon, but we weren't able to get it in in September. Um, we won't be including it in the October to be played because that seems like cheating, but like it's definitely still like right at the top of the list. Moving on! Thank God! It is October now, so we have our October to be played. We're gonna start off with Resistor. This is our October game of the month. It is put out by Cardboard Fortress, and it was a Kickstarter. You are playing as one of two supercomputers. Essentially, you're red or you're blue. Your goal is to get your line of circuitry all the way over to the other side of the table to the other supercomputer. Meanwhile, they're trying to do the same thing. In the middle of these two mainframes is a row of cards and these cards have blue lines on them and red lines on them you want to make your color line connect all the way to the end that's basically it but to do so you can replace cards using ones in your hand you can flip the cards that are on the table because both they're all double-sided it's it's very thinky um it's a little tricksy it can be easy to Think that you have the optimal move and then realize one second too late that it leaves an opening that you didn't even see. So it's it's very fun, but it's a little deeper than it looks. After Resistor, we want to play the Geiger expansion to Compounded. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't work so well on camera, but in person the box is actually very pretty. And what this does is adds radioactive material to the base game of Compounded, which means there are probably way more explosions. I'm totally here for that. And after we have blown up everything in Geiger expansion, we're gonna play Cacao. So this is a tile laying game about growing and harvesting cocoa beans, which seems really fun. Also, shout out for not having some random white dude holding a map on the front of your board game box. Now for something a little more in the spirit of the season, so to speak, Cthulhu Realms. It's a little spooky. This is a Cthulhu-ish version of Star Realms, and it is aimed more at multiplayer than at the one-on-one -on -one tactical battles of actual Star Realms. 
So this one seems like a lot of fun and seems like it would be very fitting for the Halloween time of year. That brings us to the game that we've played before that we want to play again. I don't have a better name for this segment, I'm sorry. This month though, ghost stories. So this is a game that you will never ever win. It's famous for being super difficult, but it is very in the spirit of Halloween. Ghost stories is kind of famous for being incredibly difficult. It's a game in which you are a group of samurai protecting the world from these evil spirits who are trying to take over. I first played this one a few years ago, and I remember at the time, no one at the table really knew what we were doing, and everyone was confused. I was a little frustrated. Not a great gaming experience. I didn't have a good first impression of the game. But since then, I've heard a lot about it, and I've made a lot of jokes about this game being really difficult and pretty impossible, so I kind of figure, after joking about it for years, I should probably give it another shot and see if it's really as challenging as I remember it. It is now time for our card draw portion, in which I still haven't learned how to bridge shuffle. <laughs> so you get to stand here and watch me shuffle like this. Like five minutes. Thank God for YouTube, right? So what's gonna happen is I'm going to shuffle these painfully slowly while everyone watches me. Then I'm going to draw one. Whatever game I draw, we have to play and review within the month of October or like shortly thereafter because we're human. Um, so far, this has gone really well for some months and like really not well for other months. But we always do try. Ready? All right. Cutting the deck. Oh, that's a long one. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Grr. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. So this is a very short game. I'm pretty happy with our selection. <laughs> it is basically the same as actual werewolf, which for those of you who don't know, Werewolf is a hidden role social game for a whole bunch of players, like as many as you want. I mean, that's the game you see if you go to game conventions, people sitting in the hallway at 2 a.m. in a huge group going around and, you know, accusing each other of being a werewolf. That's Werewolf. One Night Ultimate Werewolf is a shortened version of that game. The original one can take place over several rounds, whereas this one is just one round. During that one round, the werewolves have to try to kill the villagers, and the villagers have to try to discover who the werewolf, werewolves are. So it's, it's very condensed. Because this game is so quick, we probably won't do a full written review of it, but we will do an audio review on our podcast, Vox Republica. We'll include a link to that podcast in the show notes so that you can subscribe if you want and hear that once it comes out. So that's our October to be played. It is kind of ambitious, but I think it's achievable. I'm also really happy because a lot of the games fit into a kind of spooky theme. Even um, Ultimate Werewolf, which wasn't planned. I totally didn't rig that card draw. I don't even know how to rig card draws. You saw me shuffling. I, I'm pretty incompetent when it comes to that. But... If you like what we are doing here, and I hope that you do, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and leave a comment with anything else you want to see. And if we don't see you before the end of the month, happy Halloween! And then Trombon. It is a two-player trolley building game, and we played it. Totally played it. Check. What's next? So, I mean, like, what was that, like three out of five? Like four out of five? Like four out of six? Anyway, like I said, math. <laughs> so Ghost Stories is a game that you'll never win. It doesn't matter what it's about. You'll play it for hours and hours and hours, time after time after time, and you'll lose. Every time. We did do a lot of gaming. A significant amount of gaming. And most of it counted. Some of it didn't. <laughs>